Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm Robin. I'm a filmmaker and photographer based on Vancouver Island in British Columbia. And today I want to talk to you about a new item that Cinestill recently released. It's a light source for scanning film negatives. Let's take a look. So this is the Cinesteel CS Lite camera scanning light source. It costs around $34 USD, which makes it one of the most affordable light for scanning film negative out there, and it is packed with great features. One of the things to look for when purchasing a light for scanning film negatives is the CRI of the light. CRI stands for Color Rendering Index, and it is a scale from 0 to 100. In short, it's an index to measure how well artificial light can reproduce colors as close as it would be under natural light. A light from 95 to 99 CRI will closely match what you would get from a natural light. And so the Cinesteel CS light has a CRI of 95 plus. The most expensive light source might go up to 99. However, for most users, 95 will be enough. But the one feature that really drew me to this particular light source was that Cinesteel designed this light with three different light modes. There is a cool mode, a neutral mode, and a warm mode. And each of these color modes was designed for different types of negatives. The cool mode was designed for color negative films, and it will help reduce the orange mask you have on color negative film. The white light is pretty neutral and used for black and white negatives and some sort of positive film. And then you have the warm mode, which is very useful for slide film developed in E6, such as the Kodak Ektachrome 100. And the warm tone for E6 is what really drew me to this particular light, because I really enjoy shooting Tachrome 100, but when it comes to scanning it, it can be quite difficult to color correct. The E6 that you scan will most likely have a very strong purple and blue cast, and it won't really match the slide film you may have inspected onto a light table. So back in Lightroom, you may want to push that uh, white balance all the way to the max just to bring some warmth back into those images. But even though it will be very difficult to match the Lightroom scan compared to what you've seen on the light table, and having that warm light really helps reducing those very strong blue. At first, the images will look very warm, but it will be much easier to color correct and bring back the actual colors you have from slide film. Let's take a quick look what's inside the box. I've obviously opened this before because I've used it. And this is the light by itself. It's uh, fairly big. And like I said, two millimeters uh, thick, comes with a larger long cable, and that's the remote to change different color mode. Next, we have three different black frame. Um, you can almost, and you can actually fully block the light if you wish to do so. And this is useful if you have the Valoi compatible film holder so you can really concentrate uh, where the light is outputted and there is no leak around the film holder, for example. I never use these two, but I do use the uh, larger one so that I can fit my uh, essential film holder on top of the light. All right, then, so we've talked about those little black things. Then you have the manual, simple manual. And it also comes with four rubber footies you can put uh, on the bottom, and I've already attached them. Um, you can see them here. And if you don't use those, you'll find that the, <laughs> the light really slides off from any type of surface. And uh, so you probably want to use those, uh, except if you have a copy stand with a formatted little area, we can just like slide this thing in and keep it steady. And finally, you do have a quarter inch at the bottom, like any type of video light. So you could use this for video if you wanted to, to mount this on a tripod and an eye stand. Uh, might be used for some people. I don't have the use for it. I, like I said, I usually lay it flat on a table and put the film holder on top of it. And I'll just show you that quickly right now, actually. So I'll add this black frame on it. It just gently clip and lay flat. And then we'll have the essential film holder that will sit like this. Um, as you can see, it is quite, it can move quite a bit. And there is a bit of a gap here between the, the outer frame and the inner frame. And some of those footy will sit right in that little indent here. And that's the reason why I use those. 
tiny little makeshift uh, shim here that I just place here and that allows me to have the essential film holder perfectly flat. I'll put a little lever here making sure it is flat and the camera is flat because if this is slightly crooked compared to the camera above this will result in uh, out of focus area on your negatives and it will be crooked. It can be fixed in post with Lightroom when it comes to the perspective of the negatives but the out of focus area will stay out of focus. So it's something to keep in mind. Technically, the essential film holder isn't fully compatible with this light. Um, I purchased this a year ago, I love it. Um, so obviously I'm not gonna replace it. And so if you don't currently own a film holders, I would strongly suggest to take a look at the combo sold by CineSteel on their website. It's a combo that includes the CS light and two different type of film holders. One for 135 and one for 120. Before I purchased this light, I was using a generic drawing light table to scan my negatives. It worked well for a couple of years. Um, but in a couple of minutes, we'll jump on the computers and I'll show you the difference of a same negative scan using the CineSteels against the generic light table. And you'll be able to see the difference between a low-end uh, light table and a higher-end 95 plus Sierra I. Uh, it's especially useful for very dense negatives and also helps reduce quite a lot the exposure time, obviously. Before that, using my uh, generic light tables, I would generally have my ISO up to 400s and I could sometimes go up to like uh, four or five seconds of long exposures. So my setup needed to be very still, otherwise a little bit of shake could make the negatives all blurry. Compared to the Cine Steels, I can retain my ISO at 100s and also use a much faster shutter speed. And faster shutter speeds means I spend less time scanning film. So this is one of the great benefits of having a stronger light. Now we'll jump into Lightroom so I can show you images I've scanned not only using the Cine Steels but also the uh, generic light table so you can get a better idea of the difference between the two. We are now in Lightroom Classic. I've made a collection of images I scan using both the drawing light table and the Cine Steel CS light source. Um, the drawing light table, the brand is Foam so I'll refer to it as Foam from now on. And all of the images you can see here, red, were scanned using that drawing light table. The yellow images were scanned using the Cine Steel. And finally, the green images are my final edit, and they are based on the yellow images, the scan from the Cine Steel. All of those images were converted using uh, Negative Lab Pro. I used the uh, border of images to set my white balance, and then looking into the Negative Lab Pro settings, we can just take a look at them right now. Um, the, I convert them, I, I left the tone as lab standards and when it comes to white balance it's set to none. By standard it should be auto neutral but I always set it back to none just to get a better idea of how it looks straight out of the camera after the conversions. That way you also have a much better comparison between the two different light sources. Well, we'll start with these first images. It was uh, shot last summer in Banff. Um, and it was a Fujifilm Superia 200. And at first, I would tend more to favor the image to the left here, which was shot on the uh, the foam uh, light source, um, just because of the greens. Um, there are many shades of green here, and I'm generally more biased towards the greens than I am to magenta. Um, but when you look at the image to the right here, it is much warmer. Um, you can even see here on the rocks, uh, the trees here, they left there, they don't have those very green shades anymore. But overall, uh, the image to the right is much more neutral and closer to what it was uh, that day. Uh, it was late summer, so the trees had a bit more of a yellow into them, going into fall. And uh, even looking at here of the bag, um, you can see the bag here, the, I much enjoy the it's much more closer to the orange of that backpack and how it's supposed to look. And um, when I scan films such as Hector 100s or Superior, I often have issues with the um, the reds. They will often appear uh, really, very, it's a, almost like a muddy, dark orange and uh, very difficult to retain those bright uh, reds. 
Uh, and I gotta say, using that sniff steel was much easier to retain those those reds, despite the fact that here that backpack is was orange, so it's still looking orange. But later down the road, I'll show you an images with uh, red subjects that are appear more red uh, using this sniff steel. Moving on, so this is the final edit I've made to the right here. Uh, based on the cine steel. So I've added more contrast. I was able to bring back some of those greens in the trees while keeping some of those that were supposed to be yellow and are yellow. And then for the white balance, I based it on the, the rocks here in the foreground. Uh, even when the, when it comes to the river, there are much more details in the shadows. Um, and I much more enjoyed this uh, edit I was able to gain from the, the rescan with the cine steel. Moving on, we are now in National Park at Emerald Lake, and here you can really see the example of uh, those the issue I had with the reds in images. Don't pay attention to my cat. Um, so here, again, here there is a really yeah, it's really it's zooming mode right now. Sorry about that. The the canoe here are really purple. Uh, it's very undertone, and even when I pushed that file in in in, in Lightroom, I wasn't able to really bring back those bright colors on those canoes. Uh, and looking at the rest of the images, it's again really blue, uh, lots of greens here in the meadows. And on the right here, you have a much better renditions, uh, and still quite blue, but much better rendition and much better color accuracy here with the canoes. They're brighter, they're more red. And then you have much more details here with the meadows and a bit of like a burned grass here on the meadows. And um, even here on the trees, I was just able to get a bit more shades of colors between there. Usually have, uh, the trees in that region will have a, a more, more orange tip and a green um, base. And looking at the final images, uh, I'm really happy with that because I was able to get back some of that warmth from that day. It was uh, at the end of the afternoon and they were starting to have a nice uh, pink glow in the sky. And uh, I'm really happy with this. I was able to get much brighter and more punchier reds on the canoes. And they contra contrasted really well with the, the chill water from Emerald Lake. And here, even in trees, I have much more definitions. I have like bright greens and I still retain that burnt grass there was here in the meadows. And even the mountain is not as blue. This still has this uh, end of day kind of a uh, pink glow on it. Moving on, we're all still on Portra here. Oops. Um, this also is a nice example of like uh, how uh, difference uh, the light source can make. Here on the left, the foam was really green, um, blue as well, um, and it's it's just looked like there was some sort of like very very low blue filters on the front of the lens. Compared to the right here, this was scanned with the Cine Steel, uh, much more neutral colors. Um, you still have the pink here at the end of the day from the from the in the sky. Uh, the greens are greens, you know, from the trees, and then even like the, the teal color, the truck here, much better separations between the teal and the and the, the band here, the the straight with the Sonoma. Um, and my final edit was uh, again I I did brighten overall the scene. Uh, the sun was uh, behind, so there was kind of like that glow from the end of the day, very warm light and. I also wanted to add some definitions here to the to the ground, and I found that uh, here is a bit more even more neutral than it was here. There was still quite a bit of green here on the on the scan, so that's the final edit to the right. Again, the trees are green like they're supposed to be, while having that warm uh, light uh, from the end of the day. Moving on, we'll go now on to a black and white. So with black and white, it's a bit more difficult to see the the, the difference um, because the image is in in shade of grays. That being said, you can still see some differences, maybe not on the screen recording here, but um, there are much more definitions in the shadows. And uh, also I found that there is, you are able to get back a bit more of the dynamic range from a black and white negatives. Um, my highlights are brighter, my shadows are darker, but I'm still able to retain uh, um, the, the elements from there. So. Even if I push that negative further, I won't be burning any type of, uh, of uh, the black snow or the white. Um, so yeah, you can see the difference here. This is a bit, uh, even just slightly warmer, this could be because of the white balance. And here's my final edit. So again, um, I was able to uh, be a bit more creative with the dodge and burn. Uh, I darken here the trees here, but I'm not burning any type of details. And uh, here and here on the on the on the background here, um, much more definition than I had on the uh, the original scan with the foam.
another example which is nice here is again you can really see on the right that i have much brighter whites much darker black and i am not losing any type of uh, information in between so that's because the light is brighter and is able to uh, create more separations between the different type of tones compared to the one on the left here and then if, when it comes to the final edit i was able to really again use a lot of dodge and burnings uh, creating more emphasis onto the evelyn may here uh, still have tons of details onto the onto the boat um, and uh, the contrast here between the there are some panels that were missing here my shadows were a bit uh, burned but there are still written most of the details in there and i still have my bright uh, highlights here and now we'll move on to the the big big thing which is the hectachrome and how so frustrating it can get to to scan hectachrome so here is the images you would get from typically scanning a an hectachrome um it's just really really cool and blue uh, you have this purple into the highlights it's just nothing like it was on the day that's what uh, scan using the the foam light source and here is compared to the uh, cine light um, uh, light source uh, with the setting to warm so it is very warm too warm even but the good thing is that uh, even though it's warmer i'm able to cool it down and get much more accurate results uh, where here i would have to warm it to crank up the white balance all the way to the right into the warm and uh, i would still need sometimes to edit the tiff and then add more warmth afterwards just to retain because it was just so blue especially in the highlights and uh, from that here, from the negative on the right here, I was able to get back to the initial correct colors of um, of the scene here. This was shot in the south of France, so overall the the light is always very warm. Uh, we use the warm colors onto the walls, so you always have that type of like warm feeling from it, uh, which really suited the ectachrome. But uh, here, if you can see here on the on the closing here drying. Um, there, are, there are no more blues, the, the whites are white, uh, slightly warmer, uh, we were like getting close to uh, high noon and uh, again I based my white balance onto that, that wall and that was the color of the wall. So really happy with uh, what you can get now and what you can do with Ectachrome and the Cinestial CS light source. I'll give you another example here. Another typical example on the left, when you scan with the ectachrome, you have this purple sky coming from another planet, basically. You have the, the green here, which are not green, but they're blue, again, from another planet. Um, just not really walkable uh, as is. And you would, again, have to really push in the white balance to the right while trying to re keep a more neutral base, uh, very difficult to do. And on the right here is the totally different side of the spectrum where it's way too warm, almost look like if you forgot to remove your 82 filters on the front of the lens. But starting from this, cooling it down is much easier again, like I said. So this is my final edit. Now the sky is again blue. Um, you still have that warm tone from the houses here, but when it comes to the shadows, you do have those natural shadows and um, you still retain the warmth of the, the rocks here and the swirls and the staircase without being too warm and then way too cool over there. Finally, what's going to be our last images? Ectachrome, too blue, too irk. And then on the right, we have a way too warm again. You would think it's unusable. Um, and I was able to get this out of the cine steel with the warm mode on. Um, the greens here from the, the leaves are greens. Uh, you have the red here from the brushes. You have the kind of yellow uh, going onto the greens from the saplings here, a blue sky, and then the warm tones of the houses. But overall, this is the colors it was that day. It's um, much closer to get from starting from this than there is from starting from this. Um, looking at this old roll of ectachrome, uh, I could maybe could have tried to use the white uh, tone uh, because again, the, most of the images were really warm. So that would have been a nice uh, test. I'll maybe try again to rescan that roll using the just the normal uh, white light instead of the warm light on the Cine Steel CS light. Um, but again, this doesn't matter because even with the warm light, I'm able to, as you can see, really get back those colors like they were on that day. So I think by now you must know that I'm really digging this light by Cine Steels. It is so affordable at $34. Is the most affordable light out there to scan negatives. 
and it still has a CRI of 95 plus. Most competitors will have CRI between 95 and 99, but they'll cost you a couple of hundred of dollars. So at $34, this is basically a steal. Although it's made of plastic, it's well built. It's not too heavy nor too light. You do have to install yourself the rubber fully so it doesn't slide on the surface. But uh, I really like the quality. Uh, it's big enough, like I said, to suit 35 and medium format film. Um, it's uh, portable enough to be, if you wish to scan negative on the go and to put into a backpack, for example. It is USB-A powered if you wish to directly plug the light into a laptop, but like I said earlier, if you wish the maximum output, you should use a power brick. And finally, my favorite features must be the different color modes. I think Cinesteel is the only brand to provide that features, but I may be wrong. And you've seen how useful it was to have this warm light reducing the blue and purple tint on the Ektachrome 100s and how it helped me really get better and more accurate colors compared to when I looked at the slides film on a light table. And if like me you love shooting Ektachrome 100s but get frustrated when scanning it, this light will really help you get much better results with your slide film. But like any type of product, it's not perfect and there is room for improvement. For example, the size. Like I said earlier, it doesn't fully accommodate for my essential film holder. Obviously, Cine still cannot check film holders from all around the world, um, but I wish the slide was slightly bigger so I could just lay flat my film holder on top of it. So it's one thing maybe for the next versions. And the other thing I found is that this slide will run hot. I usually turn it off between rolls because even by the touch it feels really warm. Um, I'm not surprised because it's quite thin. Uh, I'm not sure if there is a heatsink. There is definitely no fan inside. And by the size of it and how bright it can be, I'm not surprised it get warm, but I'm still surprised it get that warm, if it might make any sense. So it's something to keep in mind uh, depending uh, where you place the, the light on any type of surface. That's for me guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review of the CineSteel CS Light Source. I forgot to mention earlier, but this video is obviously not sponsored by CineSteel. I purchased this light by my own means. I just really enjoyed the product, so I thought I would talk about it. You can purchase this light on CineSteel website, and at the time I think they are still running the sales for the combo with the light and the film holders. And if you are just starting out and you have none of them, I would highly suggest to take a look at that combo. I think it's the best bang for the buck out there at the moment and it is a great solution to start scanning your negative at home. And finally, if you did get something out of this video, please consider liking and subscribing so I can do more in the future. See you next time.